Moreover, one of our own time, that very man who gained celebrity by his abuse of us, in the treatise which he entitled of abstinence from animal food, makes mention of the old customs of the ancients as follows in his own words, on the testimony of Theophrastus. It is probably an incalculable time since, as Theophrastus says, the most learned race of mankind, inhabiting that most sacred land which Nilus founded, were the first to begin to offer upon the hearth to the heavenly deities not the first fruits of myrrh nor of cassia and frankincense mingled with saffron, for these were adopted many generations later. When man becoming a wanderer in search of his necessary livelihood with many toils and tears offered drops of these tinctures as first fruits to the gods. Of these then they made no offerings formerly, but of herbage, which they lifted up in their hands as the bloom of the productive power of nature. For the earth gave forth trees before animals, and long before trees the herbage which is produced year by year, and of this they culled leaves and roots and the whole shoots of their growth, and burned them, greeting thus the visible deities of heaven with their offering, and dedicating to them the honors of perpetual fire. For these they also kept in their temples an undying fire, as being most especially like them. And from the fume of the produce of the earth they formed the words altars of incense, and to offer, and offerings, words which we misunderstand as signifying the erroneous practice of later times, when we apply the term to the so-called worship which consists of animal sacrifice. And so anxious were the men of old not to transgress their custom, that they cursed those who neglected the old fashion and introduced another. After these and other statements he adds, but when these beginnings of sacrifices were carried by men to a great pitch of disorder, the adoption of the most dreadful offerings, full of cruelty, was introduced, so that the curses formerly pronounced against us seem now to have received fulfillment, when men slaughtered victims and defiled the altars with blood. So far writes Porphyry, or rather Theophrastus, and we may find a seal and confirmation of the statement in what Plato in the Cratylus before his remarks concerning the Greeks, says word for word as follows. It appears to me that the first inhabitants of Hellas had only the same gods as many of the barbarians have now, namely the sun, moon, earth, stars, and heaven, as therefore they saw them always moving on in their course and running, from this their natural tendency to run they called them gods. But I think it must be evident to everyone on consideration that the first and most ancient of mankind did not apply themselves either to building temples or to setting up statues, since at that time no art of painting, or modeling, or carving, or statuary had yet been discovered, nor, indeed, were building or architecture as yet established. Nor was there any mention among the men of that age of those who have since been denominated gods and heroes, nor had they any Zeus nor Kronos, Poseidon, Apollo, Hera, Athena, Dionysus, nor any other deity, either male or female, such as there were afterwards in multitudes among both barbarians and Greeks, nor was there any daemon good or bad reverenced among men, but only the visible stars of heaven because of their running received, as they themselves say, the title of gods, and even these were not worshipped with animal sacrifices and the honors afterwards superstitiously invented.